It's time to talk about royal dynasties. So let's talk about the plant agents. The the plantangents. The the plague tenants? The plantagenets? Is that right? In the Middle Ages, there were many superpowers. No, no, su superpowers from a geopolitical standpoint. And one in particular really fancied themselves to be the best. I'm looking at you, England. To say that England has a storied history would be a massive understatement. Not just that it was a turbulent time where bad things happen, but also there are a lot of stories to be told, and nowhere in history is that better reflected than during the reign of the Plantagenets. This is where Dan Jones steps in, because as a historical storyteller, he reigns supreme. To those who would say history is boring, I would say, <laughs> read the Plantagenets. To those who would say that nothing interesting happened in the Middle Ages, I would say, read the Plantagenets. To those who would say magic isn't real, I would say, go read Harry Potter. And then when they open the first book in the series, I'd smack them over the head with the Plantagenets and say, of course magic isn't real. Now read about something that was. Now, Harry Potter and the Plantagenets have something in common. Some thing. Literally one thing, besides being all about the greatness of England, and that is where they are both page-turning, engaging books that will remain classics in their own right, and which don't peter out like that one book by that one guy about that one country, which resulted in that one movie from that one director with that one actor with one stupid haircut that won no one over. All this to say that The Plantagenets is a very, very good book. One that I think anyone with even a passing interest in the Middle Ages should read. Jones's approach is expertly researched and written in a way that simultaneously informs and entertains. I love this book. I'm in love with this book. I think I want to put a ring on its finger. What makes it so engaging is that Jones takes what could be a stale subject matter and presents the events and people with such great characterizations that you can easily recite the events as if you had been there. Hey, uh, remember the white ship, they will say? Yeah, I remember it. I was there, I'll reply. Uh, what? Yeah, everyone got totally blasted, decided to set sail prematurely and take a shortcut through some jagged rocks. Really didn't work out very well. But, uh, that happened hundreds of years ago. Yes, and I'm immortal. Now come here and let me drain you of your life-giving blood. Where was I? Oh yes, Jones's approach to the historical persons is what particularly stands out in this book. You will remember each and every one of them and their distinct personalities, especially how all of the kings seem to be so easily characterized as kind of strange, creepy uncles. With all the kings that Jones covers, you have King Henry II, the stubborn one, King Richard the Lionheart, the militant survivalist glory hog, King John, the one in his brother Shadow, King Henry III, the way too young one, King Edward I. Trouble with Scotland is that it's full of Scots. King Edward II. He's fabulous. But seriously, no matter what or who he was into, you have to admit that his, uh, uh friend has the most pretentious sounding name ever. Piers Gaveston. My name is Piers Gaveston. I like modern art and wine, and I know more about it than you. Of course, that's not really what he was like, but then again, no one was really able to nail that one down. All we know is that no one in the family likes him. King Edward III, the one who is really into Arthurian legends, honor, chivalry, killing Scots, and invading France. Along with him, you also get the bonus of a strange cousin in the Black Prince, uh, who we can all agree kind of has an awesome nickname. King Richard II, the ineffectual and unlucky one, who always seems to be in way over his head. Not to say the ladies don't have their moments, though keeping them straight becomes increasingly difficult since half of them were named Eleanor or Margaret, with a middle name of, and last name of Galarar. But seriously, Plantagenet queens had almost as varied names as the kings did. I highly recommend Dan Jones' The Plantagenets. You are hard pressed to find such an expertly crafted book. Where it does lack is that in some ways it presents a surface level view of the events and the motivations of all the players. However, I do find this to be a minor gripe as entertainment value is just so high. I've already got Jones's follow-up on my to-read list. There are so many great things in this book that it's hard to choose just what makes it so special. So maybe I'll just highlight what is perhaps my favorite of the stories as Jones tells it. It has to be the rise and fall of Thomas Beckett, who was able to represent himself well as a man of God and simultaneously anger the most powerful man in England. 
He is also the only man in history who could have sang, I'm a little teapot, and meant it. The Plantagenets, the warrior kings and queens who made England, by Dan Jones, 4 out of 5. <laughs>